Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel where I'm going to cover nuclear tech mod updates, changes, and some of the fixes from the past one or one and a half month. Now I'm going to go over these updates briefly because there are things in this video like for example the heatsink for the pressurized water reactor or the particle accelerator which require a video of their own. So yeah, this is going to be a brief update video and you can find the timestamps in the description. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Starting this video off with bedrock ores. So in creative mode now bedrock ores can be customized in order to eject or basically constantly produce any item of your choice. So you can right click with item or for ore anything that you want to basically. So I'm going with uh, TNT here for example. Now I have two tier drill bits tier 3 tier 5. For TNT I'm going to right click it with tier 3 so that will set the bedrock ore and you can set any liquid as the extraction liquid which is going to be needed inside the mining grid. And here's where the pipette is especially useful because with the pipette you can set the exact amount of fluid that you will need in order to extract that item. So here I have 250 millibuckets of water required to extract mini nuke and also you will need a tier 5 drill bit. Now once you have set this completely just set up a mining drill and start extracting and this mining drill will actually give us mini nukes in return. So this is really helpful for map makers or if you are a server owner and you want something like this as a bonus. Talking about bedrock ores, Bauxite now has its bedrock ore variant and it is on the same level as iron. So yeah, this will serve as a great source for constantly producing aluminum. You can take this Bauxite and process it in a combination oven and it will give you two aluminum ingots along with red mud. And for now, this is the only processing recipe for bauxite available. There is no other way that you can process bauxite right now. So yeah, that's with bauxite. And talking about heat-based machines, actually, we the crucible has now doubled its output. So before it, the foundry outlet, it used to output what a single ingot, right? Now it outputs two ingots at a time. So the extraction rate for the crucible has effectively been doubled and yeah so the crucible is faster compared to before now so that was it for the heat based machine next let's come to the pressurized water reactor a very big heat based machine so for the pressurized water reactor we have the heat sink now which increases the heat capacity of the core so by default every pressurized water reactor no matter its size will have a heat capacity in the core for 10 million thermal units which limits it now adding the heat sink will increase that capacity so you can get more out of your reactor by basically pumping in more coolant. I will go into more detail in another video. Now next up the throughput of the powered condenser or the high powered steam condenser has been increased by 10 times. So before it used to process 2 million millibuckets per second now it processes 20 million millibuckets per second. So yeah, tenfold increase in the processing rate, which means you can use like so many reactors with a single device now. Next up, we have an interesting item called the drainage pipe. And the drainage pipe can be used to void fluids into basically your world. But do remember that the type of fluid that you are voiding is going to have an effect on the world. So for example, here's kerosene. And kerosene is going to apply poison in a very large radius and also you will see the turret being changed like grass is going to get turned into dead grass and this applies actually to every fluid that has some negative trait associated with it so here you can see the grass changing i am having the poison effect and if i change the fluid to something like crude oil which is viscous then you will also see oil spillage down here and if you use poisonous mud with it, by the way, it is straight up going to give you the wither effect. So yeah, be careful what fluid you use. And by the way, it doesn't really support redstone function right now. And somehow it can also avoid gases if directly connected to the tank. Talking about pollution actually. Now every machine will basically calculate pollution based on what fuel is being used inside it. So no longer pollution is dependent on the machine being used, but the fuel which is being used inside the machine. So for example, burning natural gas inside the flare stack is not going to increase the amount of soot in a chunk like massively. And the same applies to hydrogen based machines because hydrogen 
well it doesn't really have any carbon so any machine which burns hydrogen it is no longer going to increase soot in a chunk per se so yeah pollution is now dependent on the machine and also the gas mask filter the normal one and the combo gas mask filter uh, i think yeah these two they will protect against uh, mustard gas and pollution so yeah that's also there in one of the changes now moving on the electrolysis machine is what six times faster than before because it processes liquids in 20 ticks which is one second instead of 60 ticks which was before and also the what the step which is which it uses has been doubled so that effectively comes up to six times speed or six times the efficiency than before so yeah the electrolysis machine is much faster than before next we come to glyphates now the glyphate hive blocks basically you can find loot inside here so like this and you will find some uh, 12 get shells rotten flesh glyphate eggs blood even and skulls so yeah this loot is kind of the same for every nest i think right now but it will be randomized in the future also the banelli the auto shotgun has animations now as you can see when reloaded it actually has the drum while being reloaded and the same goes for the congo lake grenade launcher so here's the reload animation and there's a white phosphorus shells inside this beautiful house oh look at these happy villagers <laughs> also wires are now rendered much more or more like in a better way than before so no longer do they disappear when shaders are activated at least that is an issue i had uh, before with shaders the wires used to disappear but they no longer do that and also they look better when viewed from any angle but they sag more at longer distances which is visible and as you can see with shaders you can see them clearly which didn't used to happen before next up you can produce solvent from every variant of nepta available so yeah four variants of nepta means four variants of no not four variants four ways of producing solvent and also blood will give what uh, heavy oil now not crude oil by the way the short key particle diode uh, is like it will produce virtual particles now and the particle accelerator also has a tooltip in short you can make smaller particle accelerators now i will make a separate video for it next up we have structures like this house you see that right here and more interestingly the missile silo which has a doomsday missile in it also some turrets crts toasters that silo is pretty big actually it can make for an amazing base but i haven't really found it in my world yet because first things first it doesn't spawn in flat walls and in the overworld, in the normal world, by the way, I didn't find it. But once I will, I'm also going to make a video on it. So, yeah. And finally, these are the things that were removed. Industrial generator is a big one. It is gone forever. And uh, old watt stuff, some turrets, generator body, the steam battery, all of this stuff was removed. The unused stuff. So, yeah, these were some brief updates and changes and uh, i hope you enjoyed it if you did please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out my guys stay safe